Hi there, I'm here today to talk to you about one of Glomac's um, training courses. This one in particular is Project Risk Management and Compliance. Now risk is one of the areas that needs to be considered in all of your projects. The fact that projects are unique, the fact that most projects will never be delivered without any changes, means we have to be very much aware of the potential risks that we're going to encounter in our projects. So what we have here is a five-day highly interactive program where we look at one particular case study and we teach you through videos, through uh, competency-based exercises and really we get you to think about how you can manage risk throughout the whole project from cradle to grave and give you the skills that you can take back after one week back to the workplace. So what I want to do today is to introduce you to one of the areas that's actually reckoned to be the first step in risk management, which is actually stakeholder management, stakeholder engagement. So if we think about trying to manage our stakeholders, there's certain things we have to do. And first of all, of course, we have to identify who our stakeholders are. Now, in order to be able to identify our stakeholders, we have to first of all understand the project objectives. Because once we understand the objectives, we then have a greater idea of what needs to be considered in the project, who needs to be involved in the project, and who might have some impact or influence in the project. The next thing we then have to think about is the context. Now, the project context is very, very important because the context is the environment within which the project has been delivered. If we do not think about the context, what we are doing is we are having tunnel vision into our project, but we are ignoring everything on the outside. And when you think about the number of projects that are impacted by, for example, the economic climate or by competitors, this is very, very important. So what we can do is we can use one of the key context tools. Now, one that people, many people know is the PEST tool. And the PEST tool is often extended to the PESTEL tool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you a little bit further and I'm going to introduce you to the STEEPLES tool. So in STEEPLES, we have the S is for sociological. So thinking about the social demographics, thinking about the local population, the capabilities of the local population, if we need fully qualified people, experienced people, do we have them here or do we have to bring in from elsewhere? If we need to perhaps use local people as part of the contract, do we maybe have to give training, etc. T is for technology, so the technology could be specific technology for the project, it may be robust, well-tested and tried technology, or it could be that we're actually moving into research and development with many more uncertainties and again, many more risks. We then move into the economic area. So economics is about the fluctuating prices, for example, the different rates of currency, as well as any economic factors. The next E is good old environments. And of course, nowadays, we're very green, we're very sustainable. We need to make sure that we adhere to all legislation while still delivering that green message back. P is for political and L are for legal. So although the two are quite often intertwined, political is more around government, government objectives, government strategies. And the L is, of course, around regulatory requirements. So if we don't adhere, then perhaps, you know, we could be fined or even put into jail. So legal um, requirements are very, very important. Then the, the final E is for ethics. We need to make sure in today's projects that we deliver them in an ethical manner. So making sure that we are managing professional responsibility. And then the final S is, of course, safety. If we are delivering a major construction project or we're in an oil and gas refinery, for example, safety is paramount. So what we can then do is we can take our identified stakeholders from these areas as well as, of course, internal within the organization and contractors, etc. And what we do is we use this grid. Now, this is an eight box grid. We can keep it to just four, but I personally prefer to have it at the eight boxes. The first thing we have to do is think about 
Are all stakeholders the same? No, of course they're not. They're all quite unique. Some of them will be against the project and some of them will be for the project. So for, obviously on the positive side and against on the negative side. We also have to think about the level of power or influence that each of the stakeholders might have. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say it's low power and influence and high power and influence here. In terms of where they are on this table, on the outside we're looking at high and low on the centre. Okay, so what we would do is we would take the, the, um, the stakeholders we've identified from this exercise and we will then plot them accordingly. So let's say I've, I've selected or I've identified media. Now media are a very interesting stakeholder. They can make or break your project. So what you have to remember is the media can reach out to a lot more people than most people on projects can. Now this tends to mean that they will have high power and influence. And the media are never quite interested in a story or a project. They're always very interested. So it's either going to be the biggest waste of money, in which case let's say they are number one, we can say 1A, or it's going to be the best project ever, and we can call that 1B. So what this is doing is letting us know that this particular stakeholder can be split into separate groups. We can also then look at our other stakeholders and we plot them according to our analysis and then we can work with them from there. We can also think about where we would move, we would like to move these people to, but for in order to you really know that, the best thing to know is what type of attitudes these stakeholders would have. Now I could tell you right now, but I think the best thing for you to do is to check out the Glomax website, um, check your wonderful location that you'd like to come and visit, and book your course, and I'll make sure that you understand all about the stakeholders and their attitudes, and not only how to engage with them, but how to also manage their needs and expectations. Thank you very much.